And now for the exchanges that lack commercial substance. All right, for exchanges that lack commercial substance, you might have a realized gain, but you might not recognize the realized gain unless boot is received. So the general rule is, if there's a realized gain, but there's no boot received, then you don't recognize the gain. So if the exchange lacks commercial substance and boot is paid, even if there's a gain realized, it probably won't be recognized. What about losses? All losses realized should be recognized regardless of boot is paid, boot is received. That would be the same rules as exchanges that have commercial substance. When it comes to losses, because accounting is conservative, all losses realized would be recognized. It's these gains that we might not recognize if the exchange lacks commercial substance. So a gain may be realized, but it might not be recognized if boot is paid. Let's look at an example. So Dreesen Corp exchanges equipment for a building. The exchange lacks commercial substance. That's the key. The book value of the equipment totals 40,000. Why? Cost of 104 less accumulated depreciation of 64. So book value 40,000. Fair value 46,000. In addition, Dreesen Corp must pay $2,000 cash as part of the exchange. So they have to pay cash. So there might be a gain realized here, but because they're paying cash, they're probably not going to recognize a gain. And the way we would calculate first the realized gain is the same way we would have when the exchange had commercial substance. It's the fair value of the old, 46000 minus the book value of the old, 40000 and that equals a realized gain of 6000 None of that $6,000 realized gain is going to be recognized since no boot was received. So they'll ask you for the journal entry maybe, and you would credit the cash for $2,000 that was paid. You would credit the old asset, $104,000 they told you. And you would debit the accumulated depreciation of the old asset. And you could plug the new asset for $42,000, but the way you would calculate it if the exchange lacks commercial substance is you would take the book value of the old 40,000 plus the cash paid of 2000. That's where you get the 42,000 from. You could calculate it or you could plug it. So when the exchange lacks commercial substance to get the new asset, it's the book value of the old plus the cash paid. That's where we got the 42,000 from. Notice that none of the $6,000 realized gain is recognized. Why? Since no boot was received and the exchange lacks commercial substance. So one of the first notes to take on exchanges that lack commercial substance is that if there's a realized gain but there's cash paid, you probably won't recognize the gain. All right, let's try this. Land is exchanged for a machine and the exchange lacks commercial substance. The land has a fair value of 102. The land has a book value of 100,000. So right away, there's a realized gain of 2000 but where's the cash received? No cash received. So even though there's a realized gain, the gain is not recognized because the exchange lacks commercial substance and no boot is received. No boot is paid, but no boot is received either. So the journal entry would be pretty simple in that you would credit the old asset, the land, the 100000 and you would debit the machine for 100000 Why? Since the exchange lacks commercial substance, you start with the book value of the old, 100000 plus the cash paid, zero, and your basis of the new would be 100000 All right, let's try this question. A company exchanged land with an appraised value of 50000 What's that? That's the fair value. So fair value of the old, 50000 An original cost of 20000 and it's land, so don't look for any accumulated depreciation. So the book value there, 20000 for machinery with a fair value of 55000 Assuming that the transaction lacks commercial substance, what's the realized gain? The realized gain will be the difference between the fair value of the old land, 50000 and the book value of the old land, 20000 30000 would be your realized gain, letter C. Realized gain is always fair value of the old, less book value of the old. So that's 50000 minus 20000 Letter C, 30,000, is the realized gain. 
Now at I-75, we always try to anticipate the next question. And the next question would be, what's the recognized gain on the exchange? And there would be no recognized gain because the transaction lacks commercial substance and no boot is received. So although you'd have a realized gain, you would not have a recognized gain. The answer would be zero, letter A. Okay, same facts. This time they want to know what's the basis of the new asset. So we had a realized gain of 30,000, zero recognized gain. What's the basis of the new? Well, since the exchange lacks commercial substance, start with the book value of the old, 20,000. And since no cash was paid, 20,000 is the basis for the new. So you'll debit the new machine, 20,000. You'll credit the old land, 20,000. That happens to be its cost. So the big difference, when the exchange lacks commercial substance, you're less likely to recognize a realized gain because if no boot is received, there'll be no recognized gain. And the basis will start with the book value of the asset given plus the cash paid. So here the answer is D. Let's try this one. Felter Corp exchange delivery trucks with Dixie Inc. Now, what do they want to know? Calculate Felter's realized and recognized gain or loss. Okay. Do we know if the exchange has commercial substance? They'll tell us. In one of these last sentences, it says the transaction lacks commercial substance. So make yourself a note. Realized gains would only be recognized if boot was received. So Felter exchange delivery trucks with Dixie. Felter's truck originally cost 28000 Accumulated depreciation, 25000 So the book value of the old is 3000 The fair value of the old 5,500. Stop right there. We know the realized gain is 2,500. So the answer can only be A or D. We can eliminate B and C right now. Dixie's truck originally cost 30,000. We don't care. Its accumulated depreciation was 22,000. Again, we don't care. And we don't care what its fair value is either. Felter also paid Dixie $300 in cash. So we have cash being paid and we have a realized gain for Felter. And they're asking us about Felter. Felter had a realized gain of 2,500, but had to pay cash so there won't be any recognized gain for Felter. So here you have a realized gain of 2,500, but no recognized gain because no boot was received. So letter D is the answer. And of course, they'll ask for the basis of the new, or at least we'll anticipate that they will. And we start with the basis of the old, which is 3000 plus the cash paid of $300. So the basis of the new is 3300 And always be ready for the journal entry in a non-monetary exchange. We'll credit the cash paid, 300 Get rid of the old truck off the books, 28000 Get rid of the accumulated depreciation on the old asset, 25000 And you could back into the new truck that way. 3300 But we could calculate it directly too because when the exchange lacks commercial substance, you start with the book value of the old plus the cash paid. And the book value of the old is the cost of 28000 minus its accumulated depreciation of 25000 So 3000 is the book value of the old plus the cash paid of 300 gives you the new assets basis, 3300 Okay, so far we've looked at exchanges that lacked commercial substance where no cash is received. Now we're going to start bringing in the cash. What if we have an exchange that lacks commercial substance, but cash is received? That's the only way you can recognize a gain. We got to get familiar with what's called the 25% rule. So we're going to say land is exchanged for a machine and 15,000 cash is received in addition to the machine being received. So we're getting rid of land with a fair value of 102, book value of 100. So we have a realized gain of 2,000 on this exchange, but how much is recognized? That's the question. We have a $2,000 realized gain. The exchange lacks commercial substance, and so far that means we haven't had any gain recognized, but now there's boot received for the first time. We're getting 15,000 cash. To determine how much of this gain is recognized, we have to do a little math. To determine how much of this $2,000 realized gain 
is going to be recognized. And here's how we do it. We know we received cash of 15000 and that's the only reason why we can recognize any gain. But can we recognize all $2,000 of this realized gain? Well, we have to do a little math, we said, to determine that. And here's what we need to know. We need to know what percentage of the total of what was received was received in cash. We know we got 15000 in cash, so we'll put that in the numerator. The denominator is the total fair value received from the other party. Well, they would have to tell us that the new machine had a fair value of, in this case, 87000 That would have to be given. The new machine's fair value is given at 87000 plus we got the cash of 15000 So add those two together to get the total consideration received. So now we know we got a total of what? 87000 plus 15000 is $102,000. That's the total consideration received. Out of that, 15000 of it is cash. So 15000 divided by 102000 gives us the percentage received in cash, 14.7%. We compare. Is that less than 25%? Yes. That means most of what we got in this exchange was not cash. But 14.7% was cash, so we'll recognize that much of the gain. So 14.7% of the $2,000 realized gain, or $294, will be the recognized gain here. Not all $2,000, but $294. And if they wanted to give you a second Tesla question on non-monetary exchanges, it might look just like this. Parker Inc. traded a machine to Styles Inc. for another machine worth 12000 and Parker received 3000 cash. Parker's machine had a fair value of 15000 and a book value of 6000 If the exchange lacks commercial substance, how much gain is realized and recognized for Parker Inc.? So give this question a try and go ahead and leave me the answer in the comments section in this video after you like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot.